what is imposter syndrome? Why is it so detrimental to you? Can you fake it till you make it? And how do you even overcome imposter syndrome? And what happens if you don't? More on that in just a minute. My name is Beate Chalet. I am the growth architect. I help visionaries and leaders to create blueprints so that they can scale their impact. So imposter syndrome is something really interesting. It is when you are showing up and you feel like you're you don't really have a right to be there. And it shows up in the ways that oftentimes, and specifically for women, this happens a lot, is that um, you're still fighting for a seat at the table, if, even if you already have one. You're constantly trying to justify your right to be there or your right to speak or your right to have the job or your right to have the money that you're making. So imposter syndrome is something that really hinders you in your development because you're constantly questioning on whether or not you're good enough for something on whether that's job, a relationship, a raise, a performance review, um, anything that really would help you advance. Imposter syndrome doesn't exist other than you giving that any value, right? If you show up and you feel like you don't belong there, then everybody's going to pick up on that. So you're going to have to figure out a way now to overcome that. And how do you overcome that? Well, very simple. Everybody has strength in their lives and weaknesses and blind spots. So our entire system is being set up for people to evaluate you on your ability to look at information, retain information, and regurgitate information. That's what the educational system is demanding from you. Then they throw you in a corporation, if it's not the government, and they are expecting you to come up with all these independent things, independent thinking, free thinking, even though your entire life prior to that, that was beaten out of you with a stick because unless you were following the rules, you were not getting anywhere. So you have this internal conflict perpetually we go, wait a minute, but they told me I need to be good at something uh, and I need to get good at something, even though if I'm not naturally good at it because somebody told me that I need it, but I'm really good at something else that I really want to do. But then they said there's no value into that. That's just crazy making. So wipe the slate clean. You're here because you have a superpower, a super skill or something that you're really, really, really good at. So instead of apologizing for stuff you really don't know how to do or you're terrible at, you need to double down on the stuff that you are good at. So I grew up as the dumb kid of the three of us, right? So that was my brother who was like smart. There was my sister who was talented and smart and well. And then there was me, right? The dumb one. So they went to the gymnasium in Germany. I went to the middle school in Germany because I was dumb. I was dumb because I was told that I was dumb the entire time. And when I realized that I actually could be good at something, if I was really interested in it, it was like the whole world changed for me, right? So now if you're suffering from imposter syndrome, I want you to just do one simple exercise. Do that with me right now. I want you to think about something that is really that you're really passionate about on whether that's taking care of kids, um, assembling little trains or um, flying or running or going to the gym or working out or cooking or running a project or playing tennis. What's something that you really, really enjoy doing? And then you look at, are you good at that? Are you happy to put those hours in it? Yes, of course you are, because it is something that brings you absolute joy. So when I figured out for myself that I actually was enjoying something, I realized that the key to overcoming imposter syndrome is to double down on stuff I'm good at and to hire people for stuff that I'm bad at or to find teammates to do stuff I'm bad at. And again, to double down on stuff that you are able to succeed in. And when these conversations come up, especially for those of you, who are, if you're employed and you are in the performance review and now your, your boss who sucks at performance reviews uh, is trying to find something wrong with you because that's what this person is, is recognizing from when they went to school. It's like, well, you know, your Excel pivot tables really uh, leave a lot to be desired. Who the heck knows what Excel pivot tables are anyway? I'm going to take someone on my team who actually understands and loves Excel and happens to be very good at that. So instead of 
apologizing for stuff that you're not naturally good at or trying to overcome it. I want you to double down on stuff you're good at. It's like, yeah, well, if I wanted to learn Excel spreadsheets, uh, that's probably something I would do, but I have Mary on my team who's excellent. So I just team up with her, but let me tell you about what I'm really good at. And then you, pro then you proceed in talking about things that you're passionate about, that you're good about, and that you enjoy doing. And that's how you overcome imposter syndrome. And today, you know, I sold a business to Bill Gates. I'm a self-made multimillionaire. And now people suddenly telling me that I'm one of the smartest people they know. Figure that. It is possible. So don't you let this negative self-talk get in your way to do what you came here to do. So put it in the comments. Are you suffering from imposter syndrome? Yes or no? And if yes, what are you going to commit to do to overcome it? Share it in the comments. And hey, don't forget to like my video and share it with those of you who know someone who may also suffer from imposter syndrome. Thank you so much for watching. This is Beata Shillette, your growth architect.